the reason why I picked this athlete. He's the first person on this planet to win an Olympic medal in over 1,500 years. Really? Wow. The, the last medal was uh, in 385 AD. The and ancient uh, Olympics. The guy I'm going to talk about today is uh, James Connolly. Okay. And he was in the first event of the reimagining when of the they, Olympics. When they brought him back. Okay. Which uh, you'll find out more in this story. Oh. All right, so James B. B. Connolly. So my n- nickname for him is going to be BB. BB, okay. Although you'll never hear me use that. I, I refer to him as James. Okay. It was What was the B? What did the B stand for? Bartholomew. <sighs> there was a Bo. Brendan or Brenton. Brendan has a mangina. See, I got excited about nicknaming him BB that I didn't even write out what the two Bs stood for. So oh, okay. he was born in Boston, Massachusetts. Ah. To a Irish family, John and Anne Connolly. That's so unusual for Boston. Yeah. His dad was a fisherman, and his mother was a a baby maker. She had 12 (laughs) children. He was one of 12 children. Dang. When I come back from Bay Harbor, I don't miss. (laughs) I'm just like, well, when did he ever go out fishing? All the time. <laughs> I, I guess, yeah, like, yeah, nine months straight at a time. But so we're, we're, I mean, he's 1868. He's born. Let's, uh, you know, now he's becoming a teenager. He did normal elementary, middle school stuff, but he skipped high school. Oh, okay. And he started working. He worked in an oh, office. Yeah. That makes, it makes, I mean, yeah, he's got to support this family because maybe fish wasn't catching. You learn how to read and write, then you go to work. Yeah, immediately. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's the 1880s at this point. Yeah. Dun, dun, dun. So, and if you, unless you play tennis, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And you, if you're from a well-to-do British family that does tennis, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you can build your own court. <laughs> so he's he's working at some like clerk's office, or he is a clerk in an office. I never really understood how okay. that went. He was starring in a movie directed <laughs> by James. <laughs> yes, Kevin Smith. Kevin Smith. Yeah, he's in, in He's in Clerks Seven. <laughs> But he uh, then went to go work for the United States Army Corps of Engineers. Okay. So he's up in Boston. He goes all the way down to Savannah, Georgia. He's kind of gotten into a routine, and he's always been a fan of sports. Growing up as a kid, he played sports, all running. <laughs> I love what they describe his, his favorite sports. He liked running. <laughs> he liked jumping. <laughs> he, he used to go run in, uh, with the others. And... Whenever he got to a place where he had to stop, he just turned around and started <laughs> running the other direction. <laughs> My legs. <laughs> so while he's down in Savannah, Georgia, he's forming all these different athletic groups. Um, he creates a football team. Uh, okay. He starts a cycling league. Oh. Uh, he's he's kind of running all of these. And he at this point, he's 27. So I think we're about 1895. And 95 was a great year for me. But 1895, the life expectancy of a a white male was about 47 years old. Oh, wow. And at this point, he's 27. Yeah. So he starts to feel like he hasn't succeeded enough in life. And uh, so he decides to go back to school. Okay. So he's able to take this exam. He gets into Harvard. And it's uh, the fall... (laughs) Yeah, wow. like what? That's hard or something? I know. There was a whole movie about that. <laughs> Why was I flabbergasted? By he wasn't that? even blonde. <laughs> but it's the fall of 1895, and he gets accepted into Harvard by his Excuse me. accent alone. <laughs> yeah, probably you know legacy. Let me into Harvard. Well, you're in. Uh, I skipped over something. Um, some important history here. 1894. There was a man by the name of Pierre de Hubertin? Hubertin. That's how I'm going to say it. Hubertin. Okay. And he formed or helped form the IOC, as we know oh, it, the International, International Olympic Committee. 
There it is. Itty bitty, itty, itty bitty, a litty. <laughs> he goes to them. He says, "Hey, I want to have this whole big thing. Bring back the Olympics. It's been fifteen thousand years, fifteen hundred years. <laughs> yep. Okay. I oh god, and uh, fifteen hundred years, and I want to bring it back for this big celebration in Paris for France." Okay. He, he was French. Could you tell by his name? Pierre? Uh, Pierre. Oh. Pierre de French name. Yeah. Oh. So uh, all these people that he, he kind of helped get together, they got together and said, you know what? We don't want to wait that long. So uh, we're going to have it uh, in just two years from now. We're going to go ahead and start planning. We're going to have it in Athens. Well, now he's already in college. Like oh. the, 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 um, he started college in 95. Um, they are having the games in 96. So he goes to his dean and he's like, hey, I got I to gotta go do these Olympics. Like, I, I want to go do this. I'm like into sports, dude. I, I love it. Yeah. And the dean's like, no. Really? No. Yeah. Like, here, let me be him and then you be the dean, okay? Yeah. Like, hey, dude, bro, I really want to go do these sports. Nah. No. And scene. So he, the dean says, basically, you can withdraw and reapply. Yeah, because no one ever had heard of the Olympics before because there never there hadn't been one in, you know, almost give or take 1,500 years. It, it was like a history, like the history nerds talked yeah. about, like when they were talking about the gods. Yeah, so, so there wasn't like this uh, national pride around the Olympics at that mm-hmm. time. So, there was so no the Ralph Lauren was uniform like, contract. Yeah, piss off. You know? Yeah. <laughs> And jumps on a freighter called the Barbarossa ah. or Bar- Barbarossa Rasa. I don't know. Viva la Barbarossa. Yeah. And this, this, let's see. He was on that boat. Uh, it was funded by the Suffolk Athletic Club. Okay. And there was, I think, about 11 out of the 14 Americans that were traveling over to Athens mm-hmm. uh, were on board this one ship. Because he had to go to... Naples, Italy first, yep. and then get over to Greece from there. Okay. And as soon as he docked in Naples, he got mugged. They took his money. They took his wallet. They took his passport. I don't know if they did that back then. Uh, they took his ticket into the Olympics. Oh, no. Like, And he had no way to prove who he was to say, hey, I'm supposed to be here, you know. Yeah. And so this motherfucker tr- chased them down. Lovable losers will be right back. After these important messages. If you have to try this frozen yogurt, oh my love, it's new and calls my name daily. Hey, Brian, Brian, Brian. I don't have a lot right now, so this really nothing helps. They have sprinkles. Where are we left off? This guy just got, got all mugged. of yeah. He just basically pulled a taken uh, <laughs> on his uh, uh, this guy I in don't Naples. Know who you are. Yeah, I have a certain set of skills. I will find you. So so far, all we know about this guy is he grew up poor. He skipped high school and he loves sports, but he will work for the country and can build a bunch of shit. Sounds like a country and western song to me. And that's right there. Mm-hmm. So he's heading over to the first Olympic Games. In debatable amount of years, there was 14 nations, 241 men, nine different sports spread out between 43 different events. Okay. Now, our guy, James Connolly, uh, was the one in the 241, <laughs> and he was in three different events that were part of one sport. Back then, they referred to it as athletics, Okay. Uh, but that encompassed track and field stuff so any running or throwing event yeah yeah oh, all okay. the all the inner field and the track stuff the first event of the day of the first day of events is hop skip jump hop skip jump hop skip jump all right now that might be weird but it's it's actually what we call triple jump hop skip jump and now it makes so much sense <laughs> it right does, doesn't it holy shit <laughs> that's what it was originally it was called. originally called hop skip jump Oh, wow, that's cool. And so our guy James is in the very first competition of the very first Olympics. Okay. 
in over a thousand years. We can easily say that. Yeah. And it turns out he has a maneuver later to become illegal. He has a maneuver that uh, he does two hops on his right foot. Oh, a I'm, Euro step hop. Yeah. And then continues with his jump. Okay. Now, with that maneuver, it allowed him to reach a, uh, a distance over a meter lot further than the second place guy. Wow. Okay. So he ju- he was able to jump. Uh, it's almost like a hop's worth. 13.71 meters, <laughs> which is 45 feet or one full school bus for American viewers. So that's from the first hop. It's 45 feet to the last jump, the end of the last yeah. jump, where he lands in the Where his in the heels dirt, land. Where the back of his heels land. And his butt f- can't touch. Because if his butt touched, he'd either be out or it would they, would, from they would measure it from there. The closest. Yeah. Wow. Whatever imprint. 45 feet. I mean, that's, that's a crazy. full school bus. That is, I looked it up, 78 bananas. <laughs> wow. But I, I need to clarify something first. Um, back then... Hose gold. didn't want me. Hose, now they, I'm they, hot. Hose are all on me. Yeah, that's the truth. Preach it. Yeah. Sorry. Mm. What were you saying? Uh, the gold medal was actually silver, and you received it with a laurel branch and a diploma. Oh, okay. And then second place was bronze, with an olive branch and a diploma. Huh. And third place, jack shit. <laughs> the IOC, I think it was about 1949, uh, the IOC, which we talked about, the yeah. itty-bitty International Olympic Committee, mm-hmm. uh, they came back and uh, re-rated everybody. So he he does now have a bronze score in in the history books, even though back then they didn't award him anything. And, huh. and the one where he got the gold, but it was a silver medal, they awarded him the gold. I mean, okay. they didn't give anybody it. It, but they just said, no, nah, you have gold. You have gold now. So he medals in three different events. Uh, the United States, that year, the first in over a 1,000 years, took home the most medals out of any of the 14 nations competing USA. with 47. USA. 47. Woo! And he had three of the 47. And he had three of those 47. Wow. Well, so man. that's the 1896 Olympics. Now they're every four years. So the next one. This member I talked about, Pierre Cubitier. Mm-hmm. Cubitier. Cubitier. I, I can't do it. I can't Le do French it. Mouth. Let me just do this and you pipe it in with the goop. My dick fell off. All right, perfect. He wanted it because Paris was having their world fair at, in 1900, and it was going to be this big, grand, glorious thing, and he wanted the Olympic Games to be part of it. So he had the next one. It was also really confusing because people didn't know what was being judged for the Olympics and what was just a sport in the competitions they were throwing. The actual World Fair went from May to November. And then the the Summer Olympics in 1900 were just part of that. So a lot of people got awarded later that didn't even know they were in (laughs) doing things during the Olympics. Imagine that. (laughs) That's the Olympic medal I want. It's like, oh, (laughs) I was there. That's the dog that ran the marathon. Exactly. Like, what? They also didn't really do medals at this one. It was more cups and trophies. Yeah. Um, probably just because they, they didn't have time. Because, I mean, you saw the picture of that first one, those coins. They've got Zeus holding Nike. And then on the other side, it's, I think, uh, Acropolis or some kind of, you know, okay. mega city. The 1900 uh, Paris Olympics had 26 nations. Okay. All right, so the last one had 14. Yeah, and uh, they had 1,226 athletes. Wow, more than twice as many. The last one had 241. Oh, oh. So this has 400 or something. Now you're thinking to yourself, what? But there are more nations. Mm -hmm. And more. And they allowed women. Ah. Girl power. Nice. I thought it would be a little bit longer than that, but that's awesome. First, now, I, second one. I think, and I'm not 100% sure, uh, there was about six six yeah. women. Oh, that's, well, that's fine. But, they're, they, but they were them. there. They hey. were there. Yeah. Inclusion. And it, it grows each year after that. So yeah. uh, there was 19 sports uh, like spread out through 80, no, excuse me, 95 events. Okay. Uh, and in those events, there was, of course, the athletics. Oh, yeah. Our boy James is doing the triple jump, which okay. we're still the hop, skip, and jump. 
He came in second. Okay. So he got the bronze. He got the silver yeah. now. Exactly. Okay. Okay. Exactly. Uh, he was beaten by, let's see, uh, the, 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 the guy who comes in first. Who's that? His name is Meyer Prinstein. Okay. But is if it's E I N, is it Ean or I? No, oh, Prince Princein. Princein or, or Princein? Is, is it pristine? Pristine. I don't know. Myers. Myers pristine. is his first name. Mm-hmm. He came in first. Now listen to these numbers. So last the last Olympics, our guy had a full school bus, forty five feet. Yeah. yeah, this guy, and that was thirteen point seven meters. This yeah. guy jumps fourteen point four seven. Oh, okay. Basically, like. Almost a whole meter more, a whole six bananas more yep. than our guy's old record. More than that. Wow. Our guy came in second, beating his last time's record by jumping 13.97. Wow. You're probably thinking, man, you know, like this guy made it so far. He's been so great. He was the first champion of the Olympics. I, I can see it in your eyes. How could he fall? To second place, did he not even try? Well, ladies and gentlemen, in between the two Olympics, four years, that is, right before the beginning of the second one, our man James B. Connolly fought in the Spanish-American War. So more about that right after this. Hey there, fellow Americans. We at Horseburger understand that our economy is in the shitter. So we've designed the meal meal, everything you are used to, but all made with just simple and cheap cornmeal base. Only $5.99. With that, you get a burger, three fries, and melted ice flavored with yesterday's Coke. Try our new specialty burger created by Horse's sister. The unicorn meat double-double uses corn-based beef to lower cholesterol, all while raising carcinogen levels to an unholy degree. It's the unicorn meat double-double. Unicorn meat double-double will make life worth living again. Unicorn meat is not meat, not unicorn. It is completely plant-based and does not contain any magical value. Consuming unicorn meat will not allow you to, quote, fly down the rainbow of awesomeness is now back to the show, suckers. He just competes in that second Olympic trial that he came in second. <laughs> he just like got off the boat Was from that- fighting a fucking war <laughs> and came in second in the triple jump. Excuse me, hop, skip, jump. Did he find out six months later in like some of them? Oh, uh, oh shit, that was the Olympics? <laughs> That one, that That's one, that one already was a competition. There was, there was all the new ones. Yeah. They thought they were just comp, like, oh, okay. They didn't know oh, the there was sports. new sports. Yeah. Gotcha. So his was a, already established. So they knew that that was an Olympic competition. But I think it's, it's not long until they change it to triple jump. I mean, it's maybe by the the twenties. He's back. He's realized he's a good writer. He's writing for the Globe, mm-hmm. and he's written some books. Kind of some of those. Um, so 1904 rolls around, and next we're Olympics. yeah, we're at the next Olympics, and this year, da 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 da, da it's in America. Ah, America, the United States. We go into America, America. Is it St. Louis, St. Louis, Missouri. Okay, which I find so odd, but in the early 1900s. That place was booming. Yeah, that was where new, right? the uh, the World's Fair was being held there. Okay, but this one was between July to November of 1904. Okay, and remember, Connolly's okay. living in Boston, mm-hmm. and this is in St. Louis. Um, I thought I wrote down how far away that was, but I didn't. Uh, it's not that far. Yeah, thousand miles. And so you know he's going to be able to go, but. Maybe he's not into it anymore. So this year he goes, but he goes as a journalist. Okay. And he kind of documents it and kind of, I guess, signs autographs. I don't, you know. Yeah, and, and you're, he's 36 at this time. So he is, he yeah. He's kind of over the hill as an athlete. Yeah. Uh, an Olympic athlete. That's true. They, they're That's true. very young usually. And the, the last time he got beat, he got beat by over a meter. Yeah. So 
Meter by a meter. There's only 12 nations. Only 16 sports were played, and it was 95 events. So they had more events than the year before. Okay. Uh, or actually the same the amount of events, but less sports, which I think is weird. And I was wrong earlier. This is the year that there was only six women okay. um, competing. The other one, I don't know how many women, but they were allowed to. Just a couple of broads. <laughs> Just, hey, check me out. It's ladies volleyball. <laughs> but I can tell you about this. 16 sports, 95 events, uh, zero awards for James Connolly. He didn't compete at all because he didn't compete at all. He okay, was the he journalist only that year. Came as a journalist. Did he? Was it reporting for the Globe? Uh, yes, uh, probably the Globe and his own his blog. <laughs> yes, <laughs> he kind of wraps up his life because this man, believe it or not, remember I said the average lifespan in that time was about forty-seven 47. years old, and he's thirty-six mm-hmm. now. So you're like, oh, he's at death's door. <laughs> nah, the fucking man lived to be eighty-eight. Oh, okay. Harvard actually contacted him and said, hey, we think you're a great symbol. We're going to give you a letter jacket and claim you as a Harvard athlete. Even though they kicked him out. And so I had a picture of that. Yeah. And that's him in his 80s collecting that. They wow. then tried to give him an de- uh, honorary degree, yeah. and he turned it down. Like, put, let me back in. I'll finish it. Yeah, he, yeah exactly. <laughs> he, had, he didn't want a free degree. He took the free sweater, though. Yeah. And he was cold. But he made it to 88. He died in um, January of 1957. But he died in Brookline, Massachusetts. Okay. He was born in Boston, Boston. died in Brookline. I looked it up five miles by it's car. Like, oh, it's like an out, yeah. outer suburb of Boston. So, so this man, first Olympian in over a 1,000 years, fought in the Spanish-American War, helped rebuild the Mississippi River, and only lived within a five mile radius of where he was born. Yep. Just shows you, you can live at home. 